Breast cancer occurs when the cells in the breast develop faults in their genes and it allows the cells to ignore the normal signals that our tissues have. So in our normal tissues there are rules that they have to follow so that they don't overgrow, that they don't move around to other parts of the body. When cancer occurs in breast cells, they have these faults which allow them to ignore those rules and then they are able to divide uncontrollably and sometimes they can spread around the body, which is very dangerous. In the UK, there are 50,000 women diagnosed every year with breast cancer and there's 12,000 women that die every year from breast cancer, so it's a major problem. There are also 400 men in the UK that develop breast cancer and 80 men each year die from breast cancer, so it's not only women. Treatment for breast cancer has improved enormously in the last couple of decades. 40 years ago, if you were diagnosed with breast cancer, you would only have a 50% chance of being alive five years later. Today, if you're diagnosed with breast cancer, there is an over 80% chance you're going to be alive after five years, which is an enormous improvement. I work with a team of people in the laboratory who study breast cancer, and I also work with scientists around the world who study different questions in breast cancer. And we share our information between ourselves in order for us all to fight breast cancer together. I like puzzles, I like detective stories. So trying to work out how breast cancer grows and how it spreads is an amazingly big puzzle. To be a scientist, you're constantly asking the question, why? Why does breast cancer cells grow? Why do they spread around the body? And then you have to ask the question, how? How am I going to design an experiment to answer those questions? The reason research is so expensive is that scientists need very, very specialist materials and machines in order to do their work. The most expensive machine in my laboratory cost £450,000. It's a very specialist microscope and it is used every day by at least 150 or 200 scientists in the building. So even though it's very expensive, lots of people do benefit from a single machine. The Breast Cancer Campaign has been uh, running for over 25 years, raising money, most of which goes to scientists to study cancer in their laboratories. So they try to work out which genes and which proteins within cells are taken from breast cancers are actually responsible for the cancers to grow and to spread. Uh, they also try to find new ways of detecting cancer earlier because the earlier we detect it, the better the chance for the, the survival of the women. The breast Cancer Campaign also support research to help those people who have breast cancer to cope with the disease and also uh, their families as well. The Wear It Pink campaign started in 2002, so it's now in its 13th lucky year. And the, it's a breast cancer campaign, mass participation, in order to raise awareness of breast cancer and also to raise money for research. Last year, over two million pounds was raised in the Wear It Pink campaign. And so far, over 25 million pounds has been raised over the previous years. A lot of the success of the Wear It Pink campaign is actually through schools. So lots of schools have taken part. Every individual who takes part in the Wear It Pink campaign and donates money is helping to fight breast cancer. So you can make a change. By 2050, Breast Cancer Campaign want no one to die from breast cancer. This is a really tough target. So we do need your help. So please, Wear It Pink this October.